Do you have a miserable life? Your wife left you? Your girlfriend doesn't like you anymore? Or even your dad never told you he was proud of you? And you're always that sad, depressed kid. You always feel useless, like there's nothing you can provide. I have the solution for you. You should learn how to make Middle Eastern food. This beauty right here is some authentic Palestinian fatty. If you want to learn how to make it, watch the full video. So the first step for some authentic Palestinian fatty is actually boiling the chicken. I know that sounds white, but trust the process. Start by roughly cutting the onions into some big sized chunks and it doesn't matter really the size because we're gonna boil it. And did you see how the table is shaking? If that doesn't impress your wife, it will impress someone out there. Now put the pot on medium high heat and start by adding the oil. Then drop in the onions and add a bit of salt. And what the salt does here is actually make the onions cook faster. Now we drop in the spices and the ginger. And what we're trying to do here is release the flavor of the spices and caramelize the onions. After the onions has been caramelized and the spices has released their flavors, we add in the chicken. And we cover the chicken with water. Now we bring in the powdered spices. And if you don't have your spices in random jars like these, then you're not even Middle Eastern. I've already told you guys the measurements in the beginning of the video, but to be honest, I usually just eyeball it. And you can taste the broth throughout the cooking process to customize it to your own liking. After we add the spices, we mix it all up, then add a salt to taste. But definitely don't taste it now. Wait for the chicken to be cooked, then taste the salt so you don't get sick. Before we cover the pot, we pump up the heat to the max and wait for the water to boil. After you boil the water, a foam will start forming on top of your broth. We need to remove all of it or you will have some dirty broth. Now after you removed it, we lower the heat, cover the pot and let it boil for 30 to 35 minutes, depending on the size of the chicken. After the chicken has been boiling for 20 minutes, we start by prepping the rice. Put the pot on medium low heat, then add your oil. Now we add in half the amount of unwashed rice. And I know unwashed rice sounds weird, but you know what's weirder? Not washing your ass. So just trust the process. After we add in the rice, we start by toasting it until it turns into a light brown color. After the rice is toasted, we add in the other amount and we mix it all together until the other amount turns white. Now we have two different colored rice in one pot, yet they're getting along. Learn something, white people. After 30 minutes have passed, we turn off the heat on the chicken. Now we remove the chicken because we're gonna be using the broth. And as you can see, I'm not struggling at all with removing the chicken. After we successfully remove the chicken, like your wife removed you from her life, we start by adding four cups of broth to the rice. And I'm using here one to two cups ratio, one cup of rice to two cups of liquid. We cover the rice and turn down the heat to the lowest setting. And we let it simmer for 10 to 15 minutes, then we check on it. I'm gonna start by prepping one of the toppings now, which is fried peanuts. And you can actually use any kind of nuts, like cashew nuts or almonds. And the reason I fry it early on in the recipe, because after frying, when you let it cool down for a while, it actually gets crispier. So on medium high heat, we add in the oil and we fry the peanuts just for a couple of minutes until they turn light brown. After they have changed colors, we remove them from the pan. 
Now that 15 minutes have passed, we check in on the rice. With a spoon, we just check the bottom of the pot to see if all the water has evaporated. And you should end up with fluffy rice with each grain separated. For the chicken, we usually caramelize it in the oven, but since I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm forced to film this, then I'm gonna have to fry it. But I do recommend using the oven to caramelize it. After the chicken has been caramelized, we move them back into the plate and we start by layering our tray. The first layer is gonna be bread, which is mar'u or saj, and you can find it at any local Middle Eastern supermarket around you. So you cover the bottom of the tray with the bread, then you pour your chicken broth on top. And you need to make sure that every piece of bread has been soaked with the broth. <laughs> 